hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime making 2 and today i'm going to be giving you part 64 of uchi and naruto the sage remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and stay in tune because after this i'm going to be posting naruto the god of shinobi and on my main channel tonight i'm going to be giving you what if naruto was nosusuke and what if Naruto went missing for 4 years? So stay in tune for all the lovely what ifs coming your way. And if you're new to anime making 2 and this is the first time you hear my voice, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join the anime making 2 family and be a part of the channel. And thank you for all of your help and your support and also comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying and talking back to all of you. So yeah, and also go ahead and check out anime king, my main channel, I posted a poll in my community tab where you guys can vote for the two new what ifs that i'm going to do so switch over there and vote guys and enjoy all the lovely what ifs coming away but for now let's get straight into this so last time we left off naruto entered the ceiling dimension where kaguya was as he found her he broke the seal zetsu then appeared and told naruto everything that he's behind this all along and he wants Madara to revive his mother back in the world But now that Naruto has revived her Zetsu then attached to her body But Naruto then told Zetsu something shocking him That he has the ability to freeze time And Naruto did it As he then absorbed Kaguya As he changed His hair got long But it remained yellow He also got a few inches taller And he was wearing a giant yellow coat So the last part we left off Naruto went to the sand village as he extracted Shikaku from Gara, but Gara woke up back as Naruto told him that he wouldn't kill him. As Gara then asked Naruto what he's going to do next, and Naruto told him that he's going to the cloud as Naruto is going to retrieve the other bijus. So yeah guys, that was basically the last part we left off. You guys can switch across the playlist and check it out for yourself. So let's start this new episode. So the last part we left off, Yujito told Naruto that the nibi belongs to her and also it belongs to the cloud village naruto looked down at yujito and b what make you say that the nibi belongs to kumo he asks you don't know the biju's origin you didn't give birth to her when you were born the biju already existed so what gives you the right to say that the biju belongs to kumo we may not know the origins of the biju as naruto cut her off before she could finish her sentence but nothing, said Naruto. Your claim over the biju, just because you're the one that captured it. So if I capture it, then it belongs to me. You didn't create it. You found it roaming around the world. And you guys made the bijus your weapon. So what gives you the right to claim it then? Yujito asked. As she looked at Killer B and wondered why he stopped talking. As she could really use his help about now. Well, the reason I am claiming the biju. Is because I am a sage and anything that is born from chakra cannot deny me Naruto responded suddenly Amoy and Karu landed beside Yujito as Naruto didn't even flinch as he already knew that they were coming this guy is ridiculously strong Amoy whispered looking straight at Naruto the others noticed it as well but they didn't say anything about it enough of this nonsense will you allow me to get what I want quietly or do you want to fight a losing battle? Naruto asks. As B was currently talking to the A Tails, B, we're going to have to be careful. This guy isn't your average shinobi. Fighting someone with a running gun isn't really good. The A Tails said in a serious tone. Samui then arrived as well as she looked up at Naruto. As Yujito looked at her, Samui, please don't enter the battle, said Yujito as she and B will have to take Naruto on. Naruto sigh, so you pick the choice of fighting me. My opponent is Uchiha Naruto. I can't hold back on him, Yujito thought. As she went straight into her biju form, as Killer B did the same, as the A-tail told him to not play around. I guess this can't be helped, but I'll have to end things quickly, Naruto thought to himself. As Killer B saw that Naruto was still in his thoughts, as he quickly built a biju bomb and quickly launched it at Naruto. As Naruto stood there, when he got close to him, 
he raised up his hand as he used his own power and deflected the Bejo bomb, sending it to another location as it exploded. But he didn't even look back. I don't plan on fighting you children, he stated. And besides, I am only here for the two tails right now. I will be back for you in a later date, Naruto told the killer bee. Then, a large portal opened up on their bee and swallowed him up. What did you do to killer bee? Yujito roared as she charged forward towards Naruto in her biju form. Naruto rushed through hand signs, summoning jutsu he said, as he summoned the ghetto statue. Once the ghetto statue appeared, Team Samui was ready to enter the battle. But Naruto sent them to another dimension so they wouldn't interfere. What the hell? Yujito roared again, seeing her friends disappeared. And if that wasn't bad enough, she had Naruto and his summon to deal with. Did you really think transforming would give you a better chance of defeating me? I already told you, the battle is already lost. Neither you or Killer B can defeat me. We'll see about that, Yujito said. As she charged forward at him again, as Naruto sighed, how troublesome, he muttered, as the Gedo statue then moved forward. The Gedo statue then grabbed the two tails, stopping it in his tracks, as he opened up his mouth and chains erupted, wrapping around the two tail, as he started to pull and suck the two tail right out of Yujito, as her body dropped down to the ground. As Yujito dropped on the ground, as the last thing she saw, was Naruto. A few minutes later, she awoke. What the hell? said Yujito. I am sure I was dead. How is this possible? she said looking at her hands. I told you, I wanted the biju inside of you. I never said that I was going to kill you. Naruto told her, floating away from Yujito. She then turned to him. Where are my friends? If you hurt them, I swear to you, I'll kill you. As Naruto stopped. He wasn't amused. Don't make idle threats, he said. But your friends are alright. I was only here for you. I will be back soon for the Haxabi. Do you think the Raikage will allow you to do that? Moreover, Killer B is a lot stronger than I am. He will not go down easy. And the Raikage will be angry when he hear about this. And whenever he gets angry, Things turn out bad for the other person. Why would he be angry? Naruto questioned. If he loves you, he would be happy that you are no longer a Jinjulki. He should be happy that you can now live a normal life. Don't you think that he should be happy that you can now have what you was robbed a long time ago? The choice of being a Jinjulki or not. Yujito wanted to say he will be happy, but she knew that was a lie. He would be angry. He cares about power more than anything. Now she was no longer a guard. For Kumo, what was she? Damn you, she cursed at Naruto. You have taken away the only thing that made me useful. Yet, it was the same thing that made you miserable. It does not matter. I accepted my burden. I accepted my curse. And now you take it away from me, she shouted. What do you wish for me to do now? The only thing I'm good at is fighting. I've given up on most things. Okay then, said Naruto. I will give you something to make you useful. Am I supposed to be grateful for your offer, she shouted. As he then lifted up his hand and the portal appeared again. As Naruto was returning her friends, but what he didn't expect was a biju bomb to rush towards him as Naruto dodged the bomb as he looked back at Yujito. Yujito, are you alright? Karu asked as she rushed over to her. Yujito did not respond. Physically, she was alright but mentally, she was not. She's alright physically, Naruto responded. As he looked over at Killer B, who seemed to be ready to attack him again. I suggest that you transform back to your regular form. I did not come for you, but if you insist, I will kill you, Naruto said. Just do as he say, B, Yujito said in a firm tone, knowing that Naruto was able to kill B. 
else, it would be the best opportunity right now for they to retreat and work on a counter-attack the next time he come back. Are you sure? B asks. As Yujito nodded, yes, I have already lost my B2. We are in no state to fight and you can't take him on alone. He is not a normal shinobi. I agree with Yujito, the Haksabi said, as B nodded as he revert back to his normal form. Killer B then looked at Naruto. What do you hope to achieve by this? Naruto turned away from the group. I should be leaving now. Were you serious about the offer? Yujito questioned, getting the feeling that he was about to leave. Yes, Naruto responded. As he then vanished into thin air. Yujito, what offer did he make you? Karu asked. It was like Yujito was selling her soul to the devil. Let's just go home, she said. As Samui looked up at the spot where Naruto was, as she shook her head. A week later, at the land of iron, Mei was currently walking around as the place was cold as ever. Mizukage said the voice of Gara as it snapped Mei out of her thoughts. As she saw Gara walking with his two siblings, Kasekage, it is so lovely to see you, Mei responded with a warm smile. How are you? She heard what happened to Gara. Naruto told her all about it and she was a bit mad because Naruto refused to tell her what he was going to do with all of the bijus. I am well, you? Gara asks. I am good. I am told by the guards that the other cages have already arrived. We are the last one to come here. Shall we head out and meet the others? Gara nodded as both him and me walked off. So. You guys finally decide to show up. Oniki greeted the two cages as they appear inside of the meeting room. Yes, we have, said Mei. As far as my time tell me, we are not late for the meeting. Perhaps you're being lightless because you have more pressing matters to deal with, Gara responded as he took his seat. As Snade looked at Gara as she was surprised to hear him say something like that, cocky bastard, Oniki retorted. I don't know what pressing matters you're talking about, but do I need to remind you that you lost your biju? Gara shook his head calmly. I am aware that Shikaku was taken by Naruto because I have a chat with him after he took it away. What I meant was sh losing Shikaku isn't a crisis to me or my village and people seem to be a bit more lively since Shikaku was no longer with them. Oniki narrowed his eyes at the Kazakage. Did you simply give your biju away? Could it be that you are working with him? If you are, it will explain why you have not sent Hunter names after him. There is no need to suspect me working with Naruto. I did not send Hunter names after him because I don't want to send them to their deaths. And I already know that Naruto is not using the bijus for weapons. So do not go around start suspecting people. You may all be working with him, Oniki said. Enough of this, the Raikage said, hitting the table. I agree with the Raikage, Mifun said. As chairman of this meeting, I need to start the summit. And please, Cages, speak after one is finished speaking. I would not tolerate violence in this place. So now they clear her throat to speak. I call this meeting to discuss. The current situation in the elemental nations. The issues that I wanted us to discuss was Madara, Naruto and the Sound Village. What bothered me the most is Oniki attack on the Sound regardless how powerful the village is coming attacking it is just provoking violence. I have to agree with the Hokage on this one. May stated your attack on the Sound Village only makes you look power hungry. You were trying to attack Naruto. If anything, he did not do anything to your village to make you do that attack. If Naruto had taken that attack as a sign of war, he would have been coming for you now and you would be here asking for our help. And I doubt that anyone would have helped you out since you started it, said Snavi. Oniki merely snorted as he looked at me. 
you are only defending him because you're sleeping with him. But that is to be expected. Everyone protect their interests after all. That is uncalled for Oniki. My personal relationship with Naruto have nothing to do with your view, May stated. As behind Tsunade was Kakashi and Sasuke. As Sasuke shook his head, this was not what he expected. For a cage meeting, as he entertained the thought that if Naruto was here, he would have surely done something. You are all forgetting the bigger picture here. It doesn't matter if Onki provokes a war with Naruto. Naruto has become a threat. Too powerful, we can't allow him to roam free around this world. If he is not enough, we also have Madara to deal with. Have you all forgotten that Naruto was successful hunting down the Bijus? Said the Raikage in a serious tone. Finally, someone with some brains. Oniki muttered in a low tone so that no one could really hear him. Perhaps this isn't a concern with you since you all lost your Bijus. But this is a serious matter. Naruto should be branded as an international criminal. He is wanted in my village and Oniki's village, A said. As he then looked at Snavi. What are you expecting from me? Snade asked. He is your shinobi. And hand over everything that you know about him and Madara. Should you refuse, we will start to think otherwise, the Raikage said. Snade eyed Kakashi and Sasuke for a moment as she then sighed. I will hand over everything that you want, but I will not help any of you until we find out that Naruto is planning. Something that will affect everyone or directly attack Konoha. Nevertheless, I will offer my help in dealing with Madara as we all can agree that he's a threat that we can't allow to live. I will also send my help in dealing with Madara. However, like the Hokage, I will refrain from igniting a war with Naruto, Gara stated. That same can be said for me, May stated. Are you that afraid of his power that you will turn a blind eye even when he attack you on a key question as he looks straight at Gara? Not at all, Gara responded. I have my reasons. Oniki and I will agree, the Raikage said. Now since we all believe that Madara is a threat, how do you think we should deal with him, he said, looking around the room. Combining our top shinobi to deal with him is our best option, May stated. In a thoughtful tone, as Gara nodded and snatched as well. And we already know that Madara is relatively the same to Naruto. And Naruto has proven that the army is not an obstacle. So if we send an entire army after him, I am sure that they will all be wiped out. Suddenly, the wall came tearing down. As everyone saw someone standing at the entrance of the wall that was now visible to the outside. How about I make it easier for you all? Deal with me here, said Madara as he walked in. And who better to deal with me than all the five cages, he said, with his usual smirk. Everyone jump on their guard. Uchiha Madara, it's really you, Oniki stated, glaring at Madara. This will be fun. I hope you have improved, Oniki, Madara stated. But let us wait for Naruto to appear, Madara stated, as he folded his arms across his chest. And right on cue, Naruto appeared beside his grandfather. And as soon as he did, the Raikage was upon him with his lightning speed. Naruto brought out the gun bay. As the Raikage punched it, the Raikage then jumped back before Naruto could do anything. As Naruto then handed the gun bay to Madara, I forgot to hand this over to you. As Madara took it, as Sasuke and Kakashi narrowed their eyes at Naruto, his new appearance. Could you be the reason behind Black Zetsu's disappearance? Madara asked Naruto. Yes, he is dead, Naruto responded, so casually. That is unexpected, but it does not matter anyway. He has served his purpose. You seem to be doing well with the hunt, and you also got a power boost. I must say, I never expected for you to hold so much power, Madara stated, as he narrowed his eyes on Naruto. Neither did I, but it happened. How do you wish to do this, Naruto asked, 
as he looked at all of the cages, narrow his eyes on them one by one. I only want to fight the cages. But the Uchiha over there seemed to be interested, he said, looking at Sasuke. As he looked over at Kakashi, and his left eye was one of Obito's eyes. Arrogant fool, Oniki yelled at the both of them. You dare have a conversation so casually while in our presence? He said as he flew over the both of them as he charged a particle style at both Uchiha's. As Oniki released his attack, Naruto merely raised a hand and the jutsu disappeared without harm. He is indeed an interesting fellow, Naruto said as Madara looked at him. Yes, he is. I have prepared the battlefield for you and the cages. This environment isn't suited for battle. That will be fine by me, said Madara calmly. What is the meaning of this, Naruto? Snather demanded in a stone cold tone. As Sasuke was asking himself the same question, it was Naruto who told him that him and Madara don't agree on certain things, but they look to be getting along just fine. And Madara did not appear to be surprised by Naruto's new change. As Gara and Mei was not surprised by his change as well, Naruto also seemed older, no longer 17 years old. As Naruto then turned as he focused his eyes on Mei, Hello Mei, he said a small smile. Naruto, why didn't you tell me that you were going to come here? Mei asked as she stared at the blonde. There is no need, I am not the main attraction after all. Naruto responded. As he then released a wave of pure chakra that pushed everyone back, even Madara, was pushed back slightly. Such chakra and I can feel that he only released a bit. Damn, he really is a monster, thought Onki as he looked at Naruto. And I can feel that his chakra far surpassed Madara's chakra in the old days. Is it me or has he grown strong? Snally thought. Naruto started to point at everyone. All the cages, one, two, three, four, five, he said, as he then clasped his hands, and all of them disappeared in a black flash, and so did Madara. Where did you take my brother? Temari demanded, as she held her fan tightly. Naruto didn't respond as he locked eyes with the eight tails. In a second, Naruto was behind him, as Naruto sent him to another dimension, where he could extract the tail beast calmly, without any distractions. Now you all, stay here and don't make noise. Your cages will be okay, he said as he disappeared. Naruto arrived to the place that him and Nagato battle. That is where he teleported the cage and Madara. Now then, why don't you all show me your power, Madara stated. Now looking at the Uchiha, Garu looked at his hands. So this is why he told me to hit the training ground, or I would be a disappointment. He told you that too, May question as she got a nod from the Kazakage. We will have to work together if we're going to take him down, Snade said as she looked at her fellow cages, as Madara activated his Renegon. A snorted as he activated his lightning cloak. You all can stand here, I am attacking, he said, as he charged at Madara. Time skip. Later on, all of the cages were lying on the ground, barely any chakra left. As Naruto jumped on the battlefield, as they all have proven to be nothing to Madara. Naruto watched everything as all of the cages were doing their best, pushing their limits, but Madara seemed to be above them anyways. They all seem okay, Naruto stated as he walked around the cages, as they were all bruised up and cut, but at least none of them were life-threatening. I figured you'd have a headache if one of them died, said Madara, as he looked at Naruto. As Madara noticed the way Naruto was walking, he was walking strange. Two of them are allied with my country. It won't be good if they die. Naruto then walked up to me as he placed his hand on her cheek. As they were all conscious but barely. So, you care about those two allied with your country. So it wouldn't matter if the other three die, Madara asked. Perhaps, said Naruto, as he placed me back down. As he started to walk away, but as he was walking away, the Raikage grabbed his leg. Bastard, you'll pay for this. The Raikage used his remaining chakra as he ran his hand right through Naruto. But Naruto did not even make a noise. He just looked the Raikage dead in his eyes. 
What will I pay for exactly? He gritted his teeth. He was barely keeping himself conscious. And after that last trick, it drained him. You will pay for all of this that you have done. And for taking one of my bijous. You will pay. The bijous don't belong to you. And I have not done yet anything bad. I am just allowing Madara to have his fun. You shouldn't complain. You're still alive. If I want to, I could kill you right now. You should be grateful that you're not dead, old fool. I will get you for this if it's the last thing I do. And if you touch my brother, I'll kill you. How boring, said Naruto. You all failed to touch Madara. Do you really think that you can defeat me, Naruto said. But the man didn't respond as he fell unconscious. Did you call it the eight tails? Madara asked. Yes. This only left the Kayubi, said Naruto, as he looked up at the sky. So when will you see the Kayubi? Madara asked. Soon, Naruto responded. So, how did they do? Naruto asked Madara. They were not so bad, said Madara. As Madara was a bit curious, how would they perform against Naruto? Naruto was silent for a few moments. I guess I should bring them, he said, as he held up a single hand sign as all of the guards were spat out by a portal as they all rushed towards their cages as soon as they appeared. Naruto, I suggest that you stand down or we will have to take you down as well as Madara. Said Kakashi, the battle between the cages must have taken a lot out of you. As Kakashi raised his forehead protector, this is going to become boring, stated Naruto as he then disappeared. As he appeared in the middle of the cages, I will see you soon Madara, he said, as he disappeared in May, Gara, and their respectful guards. What just happened, Killer B questioned. Naruto took away those who he sees as allies to his country. Sasuke responded, as Madara smirked, as he too then disappeared. Later that day in Kiri, I thought I was going to die, May said, as she looked at her body that was wrapped up as she really was hit bad that man was a monster just like naruto naruto said that he would say something like that when you come to said kojo smiling at his leader naruto said me he brought us back after the battle with madara i thought that he betrayed us when he told us not to interfere but now i realize that we would have just died if we had entered the battle but guys, I'm going to be ending this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to be posted. Remember to share to all of your friends on your social media platform. And stay in tune for Naruto, the god of shinobi. And also, go ahead and check out my main channel because tonight, I'm going to be posting What if Naruto was Nasusuke? And also, what if Naruto is missing for 4 years? So enjoy all those lovely what it's coming your way. But for right now, I'm out of here guys. Peace.